So MIUI 12 is finally here and it takes skinning to a whole another level. I mean, with every iteration of MIUI, it is looking very little like stock Android, the foundation that it is based on. But that is hardly the problem and for most folks, that is the appeal of Xiaomi's homegrown software. Hi, I'm Ashraf from Mr. Phone and in this video, I'm going to take a look at 10 new features of MIUI 12 that I liked and two glaring problems that I noticed. And before we move on with the video, I would also like to extend a special thanks to Mukul Sharma, aka Stuff Listings and uh, Tushar Mehta from XDA for graciously providing us with clips for this video. I will link to their channels and uh, Twitter handles in the description below. Please go and check out their work. And before we start off with the video, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out an awesome new tech video. First thing I noticed was the font actually. It is not as slim as the font in MIUI 11 and it has better kerning and looks well rounded too. It is stockier but more coherent looking if you ask me. Obviously more pleasing to the eye as well. And there are uh, animations spruced all throughout the UI from tiny icon transitions when you minimize the app uh, to the way the app actually folds back into the icon when you, uh, you know, swipe up and, you know, close it is all completely new and fancy. What is also fancy to look at are these new super wallpapers modeled around planets. Uh, these wallpapers based on Mars and Earth look quite trippy if you ask me. Essentially, when you transition from the always on display to the lock screen to the home screen, along with that, the planets also move from a space view to a bird's eye view to a much closer look at the terrain itself. And the animations don't stop there. In fact, the animations extend even further into when you open a folder or when you're actually swiping between home screens as well. So it all looks damn fancy if you ask me. Xiaomi has also made major design changes and overhauls to the battery stats page and the storage space information page. Uh, the data visualization now looks appealing and intuitive and frankly more functional as well. For example, when you look at the battery stat page, uh, you can actually now get hourly information or hourly stats uh, of your usage as well on the curve itself. And the animation, the movement of uh, you know, the early stats itself looks damn uh, you know, fluid. The My Device page itself, which has all the information about your phone, actually looks uh, very neat right now, thankfully, because it follows very closely on the heels of the material design language. And when you head into the storage space information page, uh, you know, the design and layout is completely different now. You get this cylindrical stack of data and it looks damn good. Then there are the new floating windows. This feature actually lets you view any supported app in the picture-in-picture -picture mode. For this, you need to head into the multitasking carousal uh, and actually hit that tap to invoke the floating window button. And once you do that, you can see a floating window, which can also be resized. You can also move it around anywhere on your screen as well. And apart from that, you can also now extend chat notifications into you know floating windows. And that, that's pretty intuitive. Talking about Control Center in MIUI 12, it's an entirely new and original feature that looks really, really good. And Xiaomi's engineers must have worked really hard on it to actually get inspired by iOS 13. The name is actually a blatant copy. But anyway, you can invoke Control Center by swiping down from the top right portion of your screen and uh, you will get information, you will get quick uh, setting toggles which you can directly head into and uh, access and there are big stacks of cards for uh, you know, regularly used toggles like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you know the works. You get uh, you know icons with uh, transition animations plus you also get scrolling text, essentially the works. It looks good, no doubt about it, but inspired by iOS 13. Now the AI calling feature in MIUI 12 might not uh, ever venture out of China, but it's, it's definitely worth talking about. It is based on a Chinese upstart's hearing engine, which apparently has 98% accuracy on Mandarin. Uh, this feature is primarily based for people with hearing disabilities. Essentially what this does is when somebody is on a call, it transcribes their uh, you know voice and shows text on screen. And of course has AI generated responses for that as well. Uh, so that it makes, you know, making calls much, much easier. Obviously, this feels very similar to Google's duplex technology, but, uh, you know, it's not nearly as deep or futuristic. The Dark Mode 2.0 feature is possibly the most thoughtful iteration to an already existing software feature. Uh, one of the things that Dark Mode 2.0 does is dim the wallpaper based on daytime or nighttime when, when you have Dark Mode on. And there are changes to the way fonts look as well, so that it's more legible for you to read. 
For example, the new dark mode on MIUI 12 will automatically adjust the weight and the thickness of the font uh, so that it becomes more legible to read against uh, dark backgrounds. And of course, it will also make enhancements to contrast, uh, you know, based on your ambient light settings. So I think that reading on the new dark mode 2.0 will possibly be really, really good on MIUI 12. And I think that it's going to be uh, something that I'm definitely going to use on a regular basis. With MIUI 12, Xiaomi has a three pronged uh, security and privacy feature strategy. It's called barbed wire, flare and mask system. With barbed wire, essentially what happens is that you get in big fonts whenever it, an app is trying to uh, access the camera, the location or the microphone uh, from your phone, it will definitely ask for permission. I think I'm going to use this feature extensively. Now, flare actually takes that one step ahead and keeps a log of all the times that an app asks for these permissions uh, so you can go and check that out uh, you know for yourself plus it also goes out of its way whenever an app tries to actually uh, access the camera the location or the microphone without your permission so that's absolutely incredible mass system is very similar to what we saw on realme ui as well essentially what this uh, feature does is that it will send a dummy text or an empty one whenever an app asks for access to call logs or messages. I think, I think this is also pretty useful. These features, if used rightly, can greatly improve uh, the privacy of your sensitive data. Now, MeShare, uh, a feature that is made in collaboration with a consortium of, uh, you know, the Chinese manufacturers like Vivo, Oppo and Xiaomi and a few others, uh, is actually uh, has received a fresh new coat of paint and it looks visually uh, very appealing now. Having said that, that is not what I'm more interested in. What I'm interested in is the fact that now MeShare also works with, uh, you know, laptops, which is essentially Xiaomi's own ecosystem laptops, which is Mi notebooks and uh, the Redmi book laptops. Now, uh, granted, these are not available in India and therefore this feature might not be useful for anyone, uh, you know, not based in China. Having said that, Ishan Agarwal re recently tweeted that, you know, Redmi books could be coming to uh, India soon. And therefore, if this feature comes to India, I can't wait for, uh, you know, Android and Windows to talk in the same way that iPhones talk to MacBooks. That I think is possibly one of the most important missing feature for me when you're talking about the ecosystem play, because that seamlessness on Apple's ecosystem is absolutely gorgeous. And to be able to achieve that on Android and Windows would be, you know, a dream come true. A lot of first party apps on MIUI 12 have seen a visual upgrade, obviously, which includes the camera app as well. Having said that, what I particularly like about the camera app's new upgrade is that there is a functional improvement that I found, a small tiny tweak that I found to be very useful. What you can do right now is you can actually shuffle the camera modes as per your preference on to show up on the carousel. Now, what this means is that, say, for example, if you wanted the 64 megapixel, uh, you know, tab to show up first whenever you open an app instead of the photos app because you use uh, you use 64 MP to shoot uh, regularly or say, for example, if you want macro or say, for example, if you want the pro mode, you can do that. It's in your hands now as to what the camera will show up first. I think this is something that I'm going to find very useful because I use, uh, you know, my cameras to mostly shoot videos than uh, photos. So I would want the camera to show up photos first. So yeah, so small, small, tiny little tweak, but I quite like it. So, okay, there are two glaring problems that I also mentioned at the start of the video. And firstly, I would like to talk about the fact that, which I've already alluded to, is the fact that uh, Control Center in MIUI 12 is a blatant copy of iOS 13, no doubt, including the name, which at least they could have been inventive about, I feel, in my personal opinion. There are far more similarities between MIUI 12 and iOS 13. And if you want to look at all the visual uh, you know, similarities between the two softwares, then there is a video how to, made by Mr. TechTuber. You should check that out and you, know, you can see it on your screen right now. Uh, similarities are just glaring. Secondly, the animations on MIUI 12 uh, look pretty heavy handed, including the super wallpapers as well. Now, this could lead to two problems. Firstly, on uh, you know low end and mid range devices, these animations could slow down the device. And of course, it could also take a hit on battery life on most other devices as well. Now, the solution to the first problem would be to, of course, uh, you know, reduce the animations to an extent. And the solution to the second problem would be to improve battery optimization or increase the size of the battery of the newer phones that launch in the market. Having said that, I'm pretty sure that Xiaomi has figured this out primarily because most of its portfolio is in the affordable category. So I'm sure that there is some thought process behind adding so many animations to MIUI 12 and making it slightly heavy handed. 
So we're at the end of the video and the important thing to note here is that MIUI 12 was launched only in China and therefore we have only update cycles for China available. So the list of devices that support MIUI 12 are up on your screen right now but this is not based on the global data or global update cycle so be very particular about that. Having said that it would not be wrong for you to guess that most of these phones on the list should definitely get MIUI 12 whenever they come to India as well. In case you would like to actually install MIUI 12 on your phone, XDA has a very handy guide. I will link to that also in the description below. So go ahead and check that out if you are uh, daring enough. If you're not using the phone as a primary phone and if it's a secondary phone lying around, you can definitely test it out. But I would suggest against you doing this on a primary phone for sure. One, because it is a daunting process because you have to unlock the bootloader and get TWRP installed and all of that. But secondly, and most importantly, because it's not going to be a stable update for sure. So that's 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 the reason why I am, uh, you know, advising against doing this at the moment. Anyhow, these are my initial first few thoughts of MIUI 12 and a few features that I liked and the, you know, problems that I noticed. But, uh, you know, I would definitely love to test it out extensively. What do you guys think about MIUI 12? Do let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Ashar from Mr. Phone signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.